In this video, I'm going to go over how to calculate reactions when there are internal supports and what to do when you have inclined loads. So the example looks something like this. On the left, we've got an inclined member that's supported on a roller with a fixed end at the left at point A, and then we have a pin-connected member uh, on the right between the roller and a pin fixity at the right side. Then we've got a distributed snow load which acts vertically on the left of 10 kilonewtons per meter. We've got a point load on the right member of 20 kilonewtons. And then we've got a point moment at the middle of member AB of 10 kilonewton meters. And we want to find all of the reactions. Now the first step obviously is to see if this is a determinate system or not. So can we find the reactions using equilibrium alone? So let's do that first. Okay, let's check stability. And determinacy. Okay, so on the left side of the equation, as you recall, we have 3m plus r, and on the right side we have 3j plus ec, which is the equations of condition. We have one, two members, so 3m is 6. We have three reactions at the fixed end, two at the pin end, so that makes five total. On the right side for joints, since we have two members, we have a joint here, here, and here, so that makes three, so three times three is nine. And then equations of condition, we have two, because we have a single roller, and a roller releases two directions. It releases the horizontal, and it releases the moment reaction at that internal connection, so we have EC is equal to two. Let's see if we add these up. We have 11 on the left side, 11 on the right side. These are equal. Therefore, our system is determinate. Okay. And as for stability, all of the stability conditions are okay. And there's no mechanism. So you'll recall that includes uh, whether the uh, support reactions are parallel, whether they converge at a certain point, which is not the case in here, and whether we have any kind of obvious mechanism, which we don't. Um, you might think this has a mechanism because it's pin end here and roller, but remember this roller can take uh, vertical loads in both directions, so this cantilever part here that's fixed is actually holding this piece up. Okay, so let's start with our reaction calculations. If we do a free body diagram of the right side only, okay, because this is clearly the much simpler side here to start with. Okay, we're going to get a member like this. Okay, where Left side is B. So I'll write that on top. Left side is B. Right side is C. We have loading that looks like this. 20 kilonewtons in the middle. Those are our explicit loadings, and we have our reaction. So from the roller, we can only have a vertical reaction. So I'll draw that up for now. Call that B, Y, B, C. So that's in the y direction on member BC. Here we have CY. We only have one member here, so I won't specify. And we have CX. These are the reactions caused by the pin. CX. Okay. So again, at the pin here, we have no horizontal restraint or a moment. Okay, so let's start with a sum of moments about point C and this is for member BC equals zero. And here on the left I'm going to draw the direction 
Okay, this is what it's done in the textbook. This just means that moments that are counterclockwise are going to be counted positive when we do our equilibrium. So we're taking it about C because we want to find this BY. So we're going to get 20 times 1.5 meters minus BY DC times 3 meters equals 0. So see, this is 1.5. Oh, I forgot this up here. So this distance here is half the total length, which is 1.5 meters. Okay, and then if we solve this equation, we get BY BC equal to 10 kilonewtons. And since this is positive, uh, we know that it is the same as what we've drawn it. So then we know that that's up. So now knowing dy, we can do a sum of forces in the y direction. Again, I'm going to signify that forces in the up direction are positive. So then we get 10 kilonewtons, that's by, minus 20 kilonewtons for the applied point load, plus cy equals 0. And we're going to see that if we solve this equation, we get Cy equals 10 kilonewtons positive, which means that it's in the same direction we've drawn it, which is up. Piece of cake. And then the trivial part here, sum of forces in the x direction equals 0. I can say that this is positive, but it doesn't really matter, because all it means is that Cx equals 0. Which means there's no horizontal force at the pin due to this applied load. Okay, so now I can continue by doing the FBD on the left side, which is our more complicated side. Okay, this is AB. Okay, so let's draw the member. So it all looks like this. Okay, this is A and this is B. And then we have a moment. There's a point moment about the center. 10 kilonewton meters. We have our unknown reactions, Ay, Ax, and moment about A. And then here we also have vertical load, 10 kilonewtons which is from the roller. I'm going to explain that a little bit more in a second. So we have our distributed snow load, which is distributed along the horizontal axis, and this is 10 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, now this load here, the one pointing down from the roller, is the equal and opposite reaction from the right side of the uh, structure. So here, By equals up. And you remember, whenever we cut a structure uh, to make two free body diagrams, the loads have to be equal and opposite. So if I have By is up on one side, then By has to be down on the other side. Same with the axial forces. If the axial force is going to be right on one side, then it has to go to the left on the other side of the cut. So that's why 10 kilonewtons down here. And you can imagine that this is the case because we're pushing down with 20. If we're pushing down with 20 here, this is going to be pushing down on the pin and it's going to be pulling down on this roller. So that makes sense. Okay, so now for this side, I'll start with a sum of moments A equals zero. Now generally these equilibrium equations you can apply them in, in uh, any order that you want, but uh, if you pick a good order then usually that means minimizing the work for you. So you want to pick you want to pick equilibrium equations that are going to give you a solution of one of the unknown reactions only. And that'll save you time. Otherwise, you're going to be solving two equations, two unknowns, um, which is not a big deal. It just might take you a little longer. So if we do some of moments about A, okay, now we see AY and AX now 
go right through A, so they're not going to cause any moments. So we know right away that when I do the sum of moments, I'm going to come out with a solution for MA directly. So we have MA minus 10 times 4 times 2. This is for W. Okay, so this is 10 kilonewtons per meter times the length, which is 4 meters on the horizontal projection times the moment arm, which is two, which is half, because the center is uh, right in the center of this distributed load. Okay, and uh, I'll do uh, some different types of distributed loads so that we can see what the differences are. So minus 10 times four, that's for this load here, 10 times the moment arm are four, minus 10, which is for this moment. Now when you have a point moment like that, it doesn't matter where that point moment exists on the structure, it always applies just a constant moment to your moment equilibrium equation. So if I had a 10 kilonewton per meter point moment, but it was out here around B, it doesn't matter. It would still be minus 10. So again, those point moments, it doesn't matter where they are. Wherever you have a point moment, when you're applying it to an equilibrium equation, it just applies a constant. There's no type of uh, location parameter that's required. So if I solve this equation for MA, we get MA is 130 kilonewton meters and this is a positive value so therefore we know that it's in the same direction as we've drawn it which is this way okay counterclockwise okay then we can do sum of forces in y up is positive equals zero so now we get a y is up minus 10 times 4 so that's 10 kilonewtons per meter times 4 meters, which is the horizontal length here. And then minus 10, which is the reaction from the hinge, or sorry, from the roller, equals zero. The moment has no, the point moment has no effect on the vertical equilibrium. So if we solve this equation, we get Ay equal to 50 kilonewtons. And that is up because it's positive. And that's the way that we've drawn it. And then sum of fx equals 0, gives us ax equal to 0. Okay, so pretty simple. We've solved for four reactions. What's allowed us to do that, sorry, we've solved for five reactions, and what has allowed us to do that is the fact that this has an internal release in this structure caused by this roller, which provides us with two additional equilibrium equations at the roller, being that the moment at the roller is 0 and the horizontal reactions at the moment are also zero. And then we come out with the full equation here. Now what were to happen, okay so now we have it, we can do an additional step here. Delete that. We can do an additional step here where we can check our overall equilibrium. This can be kind of a check on your answer. Okay, so if you'll recall, I'll just draw it in black. We have this, we have this with a pin. This side is fixed. And we have our moment here. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to draw those reactions. Let's get rid of those. The moment here of 10 kilonewton meters. We have a force here of 20 kilonewtons. Then we have a vertical reaction here of 10. Horizontal reaction is zero. We have our distributed load of 10 kilonewtons per meter. And we have our vertical reaction of 50 kilonewtons and a moment of 130 kilonewton meters. I'll make that a little bit more explicit. 130. And again, the horizontal reaction here we calculated to be zero. So these are just all of the reactions we calculated along with all the point loads that are applied. Um, and we'll recall the distances here. Oops. 
drawn very poorly. So this is 2 meters, this is 2 meters, this is 1.5, and this is 1.5 meters. And this is 1.5 meters to the point load, and 1.5 meters up from there. So now if we want to do a sum, if we want to do a sum of the moments about C, just to check, C is up here. Okay, this is B and this is A. Then we can check and make sure that our reaction forces make sense based on the external equilibrium. Zero. Question mark. Okay, so we do about C. So the first one we have is 20. That's our point load times 1.5 meters. That's this load here. Then we have plus, because we're going counterclockwise about C, uh, 10 kilonewtons per meter times 4 meters, now times 5 meters, which is the lever arm between C and the center of this distribution. Then we have minus 10 for the clockwise point moment, plus 130 for the counterclockwise reaction moment, and then minus 50 times 7 meters for the vertical reaction at A. Equals zero, question mark, yes. Uh, if you calculate this out, it does equal to zero. So there we know our reactions seem to make sense. And we could, we could do the vertical and horizontal, but I'll leave those to you. So now that's if we have a wind load. Now what would be the different if we had the difference if we had a dead load instead? So resolve forces on left FBD if dead load. Now the right free body diagram will not be affected because the free body diagram that we did for this member didn't depend at all on what was happening on the left side. So we're going to have the same reaction force uh, from the roller on B being applied to this uh, left member. And all we're going to do is change this distribution, this distributed load. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this. Here's our diagonal. Okay, I'm going to draw loads. So now we have something that looks like this. We're going to apply a dead load. And that looks something like this. And so when it's drawn on an angle like this, I'm going to put 10 kilonewtons per meter. What that means is the load is still pointing down, but now it's based on the length of the member instead of the horizontal projected length. So snow load was based on horizontal projected length. Okay, which was this four meters. But now the 10 is based on this entire length of the member because it's dead load. So dead load is directly related to the length of member. So then we have this 10 kilonewtons, which is from the right side on the roller. We still have the 10 kilonewton meter moment. And then now we have an AY that we don't know, AX that we don't know, and moment about A that we don't know. Okay, so again, as I said, this is dead load per meter length of element. not projected length. Okay, so now this, uh, this I purposely made it a, this is three high, right, four across, if you look back, so if we go back here, okay, you'll see that we have a three high and four across, and so many of you might recall that that is equivalent to a, that's a three, four, five triangle. So the hypotenuse length here is five. Now, if you didn't, if you didn't have that special triangle, then you know you could use 
uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared square root of to find the hypotenuse length and that equals 5. Right, but 3, 4, 5 is just particularly convenient. So that means that the length of this diagonal is 5. So now when we do our sum of moments about A, say counterclockwise positive equals 0, we have MA, obviously. Now for the distributed load, we have 10. It's 10 kilonewtons per meter. And this is times 5 meters now. And the moment arm is still 2. So this changed. OK, it was 4 for snow. And this stayed the same. And now, it, why did this change, but this stayed the same? Well, that's because these loads are going directly down. And when we're talking about determining our moment, we want the perpendicular length, right? So these are vertical. So we want the length perpendicular to the direction of the loading between the point that we're calculating the moment about and the center of that distribution. So the center of that distribution is still 2 meters from point A, perpendicular to the direction of the load. Okay, and then the rest of this stuff ends up being the same. So we have 10 times 4 meters for this vertical load, and then minus 10 for the point moment equals 0. This gives us MA equals 150 kilonewton meters in the counterclockwise direction. And now this makes sense, right? Because before we had 130, okay, and now we've effectively increased our load because we're doing it on the basis of the length of the member instead of the projected length. So we have 5 over 4 um, times this load. Uh, 5 over 4 times the distributed load, which means that we expect our moment to increase. Okay. This is an example of looking at something and trying to find out uh, whether what we have come out with makes sense. So if we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction, equals 0. Then we have Ay minus 10 times 5 minus 10 equals 0, and Ay equals 60 kilonewtons. Up. Again, also greater because we've effectively increased the vertical load before it was 50, now it's 60. Okay. Now, what if we had a wind load? Okay, then our situation looks like this. So we have a diagonal. Okay. And we still have our unknown MA, we still have our unknown AY, we still have our unknown AX. By the way, AX for this previous one, again, is trivial, right? So we don't expect any AX, because AX is our only horizontal load, which is not going to be the case this time. So now we have our 10. Ten kilonewtons coming from the roller. We have our 10 kilonewton meter point load, point moment, sorry. And so now our wind looks like this. Okay, wind is a pressure, so it can't create any traction on the surface, which means all of the loads that come from the wind have to be always perpendicular to the surface. Because you can imagine that air can't pull sideways on a surface. Okay, it's a little bit difficult here. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now let's say that this is still equals 10 kilonewtons per meter. Okay. So this time when we do the sum of the moments, We have MA, okay, minus 10 times 5, okay, this is 5 meters. So this is our distributed load. 5 meters is now the length of this load, which is equivalent to the length of the member, not the projected length, right, because we're talking about a wind, mo wind load. And now our moment resultant here 
is now going to be 2.5 meters. Okay, so here for the dead load, we had the same amount of load, right, because it was 10 kilonewtons over 5 meters, but our moment arm was 2 because of the perpendicular distance, as we discussed before. This time, the perpendicular distance, right, the perpendicular direction is perpendicular to that member. So actually, the moment arm between A and the center of that load here, right, is 2.5 meters, which is half the length of the member. Okay. So we're effectively increasing our our moment by having the the load be perpendicular to the member. Then we have 10 times 4 as before, and negative 10 equals 0. So here we have ma equals 175 kilonewton meters in this direction. And so you see that we've increased our moment even more by having the wind load, which we expect because we have a different moment arm. OK, then I'll go to the next page. Keeps putting this. OK, so then if we want to finish off, we have sum of Fy equals 0. We have Ay vertically minus 10. Now this is going to be 4 over 5 times 5. And I will show you why. OK, so let's go back. OK, so now we have this load, this distributed load. We're trying to find the vertical force uh, component that r results from this distributed load. So it looks like this. We have our distributed load. We want to find what this is equivalent. Okay, so what we have here is, as we said, this is a 5, this is 4, sorry, looks like this. Okay, we have a 5, we have a 3, and we have a 4. Now, this is for the load not for the member. Let me draw it again. Okay, so our member is like this. Oh, let me just double check. Right, this is 3 high, 4 long, by 5. That's AB. Right? Now the forces that are coming onto it, the triangle looks like this. We have 5, and we have 4 on the vertical, and 3, right? And that's because this one is perpendicular to the, the load is perpendicular to the member, so the 3 and 4 actually switch here. Now if you did this with angles, you'd see that this angle is the small one, right? But now if we were to exaggerate this a little bit, so say we had a really shallow, and sometimes it's worthwhile to do this and draw an exaggerated picture. So here, the small angle is the one on the horizontal. But here, for the one perpendicular, you can see that the small angle is the one in here. OK, so that's why these 3, 4, 5 switch. Now, you can find these by using trigonometry instead, which you know I would suggest as a general method. Um, but it's, it's not so bad if you can swing it to use the, the ratios of the different lengths of the triangle sides in order to determine your ratio. So what we have here is a total of 10 times 5, right? So that's 10 kilonewtons per meter, 10 kilonewtons per meter times 5 meter length. But then we want to find actually the vertical component of that total 10 times 5. So the vertical component is 4 fifths of that 5. Okay, and again, so you could just use trigonometry um, if you prefer. Find the angles, uh, find the sines and cosines of those angles, and you'll get the, uh, the sides. Okay, minus 10 equals 0. So you see Ay is equal to 50 kilonewtons up. 
which is actually the same as what we had for the snow load. Okay. Then the other thing that's different now that we have the wind load is that the wind has a horizontal component as well as a vertical component. So for the first time now, we get an AX. So the horizontal is AX, right? So we have AX here, that's, that's our reaction. And what's causing that reaction is the horizontal component now of this distributed wind load, which is equal to 10, now times three over five, times five equals zero. So you see now we're three over five is the horizontal component. Okay, so it's three fifths of the total, uh, the total load in the direction of the wind. And so we're gonna get an AX, which is equal to negative 30, okay, which is to the left. Because when we originally did our calculation, we assumed that it goes to the right and we got a negative number, so that means the arrow actually goes left. And that's it, that's how you calculate uh, reaction forces for members with internal releases and with inclined members.